definitely want a good solid concept as to how the surgery for their children is going to go. This animation gives you a good, very careful, and very accurate idea of exactly how that surgery will go so that you can understand uh, what will happen more clearly. Much of the principal focus of the first surgery is on repairing the nose. Here you see these scissors being inserted into one of the incisions. The idea is the skin and fat that are on top of the cartilages need to be lifted up so that the cartilages can be repositioned. Surgeons use scar tissue to get the tissue to heal together in a new orientation, a new hopefully normal orientation. Here you can see after removing the skin and fat from the tops of the cartilages, we pulled up the depressed cartilage of your child's nose into a more normal position. And uh, this will be sutured in place afterwards. As you can see, a lot of the extra tissue that grew in on the side of your child's cleft is going to be used to fill the holes between the mouth and nose. I uh, hear this little piece of tissue that came from the edge of the cleft is being put into this incision on the side wall of the nose. The bottom edge of that flap will then come across and close to the septum to close the leaks. Uh, it is important for your child not to have any leaks between the mouth and nose at the end of the procedure. The next very important uh, issue in this kind of surgery is a careful approximation of your child's muscles. Uh, getting the muscles together in the cleft lip so that your child can use his lip in a normal way is really quite crucial. I think even if the skin were closed carelessly, if the muscle is closed correctly, as your child uses the lip, the lip will stretch and grow with use of the lip and keep the child's uh, lip orientation and shape quite normal. Here you can see my variant of a cleft lip repair. I like to uh, have the filtral column of the lip come up the same side of the lip. There's another common operation called a Millard repair where this doesn't happen. Uh, this is a minor modification of the Millard repair, but one I like. At the end of the lip closure, I place a suture, as you can see here. This is an absorbable stitch that will overcorrect the position of your child's nose. A similar such stitch will be put into the lateral nasal wall uh, to lateralize it. If a bilateral cleft lip child, uh, you'll have several concerns. Uh, certainly the muscles of the lip will need to be put together correctly, but it's also important that the cartilages in the tip of the nose be corrected. Once they're put into normal position, as your child's nose grows, uh, the shape of the nose will improve with time. Here a pair of scissors is being used to simply elevate the fat and skin away from the cartilages so that they can be brought up and together at the end. We'll close the inside of the lip and we'll also make sure to close the nasal floor for your child so that there are no leaks between the mouth and nose. Here you can see a piece of tissue from the edge of the lip being used to close the nasal floor. The inner aspect of the lip is closed and most important the muscle is repaired in the lip. Now you see a suture being placed. This absorbable stitch will bring the cartilages of the nose uh, together into a normal orientation at the end of the procedure. As that stitch is tied down, the nose is put back uh, onto its normal connection to the septum, and the center piece of the prolabium is used to make the lip. A component of any surgery for a child with a cleft. Here you can see in schematic a very simple way that the nasal floor is going to be closed for your child. Uh, this will be followed by closing the top of the mucosa of the mouth. The muscles in a normal palate uh, will pull the palate up and back uh, during speech. These are the muscles surrounding the tonsils. They actually pull the palate down. This blue muscle, the levator palate, uh, connects from the skull base from one side to the other. As this muscle contracts, it brings the palate up and back and closes off the nose during speech. Notice it's also moving the mouth of the eustachian tube. In a cleft palate, the muscles are misoriented. The muscles are uh, attached to the back end of the hard palate. Uh, simply detaching the muscle from the hard palate is not enough. There is an annoying little tendon uh, that needs to be cut to allow this muscle to transpose. 
I'd pull a tendon tight, uh, stitch it to the hamulus to try to improve eustachian tube function, some uh, research uh, area that I subscribe to. Then dis divide this little tendon such that the muscle can be brought back and connected to the other side. Uh, when this happens, your child should have actually a supernormal uh, muscle anatomy to allow him to close off his nose during speech. Then, of course, the top side of the palate is closed, uh, as we discussed in the beginning of this video.